Well, this is a, a paper that is going to appear in, on a book of uh, the effect of COVID-19 on uh, income distribution. Um, the paper, uh, I'm, I'm the leading of the paper, the um, corresponding author, but there are many colleagues uh, contributing to the paper from uh, seven countries in uh, Latin America. And the idea here is um, to analyze how well the tax and benefit system uh, worked during the pandemic. And the idea is trying to decompose the effects uh, of changes in market incomes and the contribution of taxes, the contribution of benefits, and also the contribution of new uh, policies that were implemented during the, the, during the pandemic. Uh, the idea is we have uh, seven Latin American countries, Ecuador, Colombia, Mexico, Bolivia, Argentina, Peru, and Uruguay. Uh, this is a great variety of countries. We have, for instance, Uruguay that is the most redistributive uh, country in the region, but also we have uh, countries that redistribute less, for instance, Bolivia. So this is, a, a generally speaking, a, a um, very a variety of countries for the region. And uh, the other thing is that uh, there is also a, a high degree of difference between uh, the effect of the pandemic on labor market in, 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 the, in the countries of the region. So there is a great variety uh, to analyze here. Uh, we know uh, that the pandemic brought uh, a lot of, uh, of problems, uh, on increasing in unemployment, uh, uh, a huge deterioration of the labor market and uh, an increase obviously in, in poverty and extreme poverty. So we want to check what happened with the tax benefit system and uh, how the new policies uh, cushion this, uh, this pandemic uh, and how um, these policies affected the distribution of incomes in the region. Uh, this graph uh, presents the changes in uh, employment levels. Uh, we see we have um, separated the, the analysis for uh, two periods, the second quarter of 2020 and the last quarter of 2020, and we have a, as a baseline uh, 2019. Uh, we can see that regardless if you take into account formal or informal employment, there is a huge drop in employment in the region. Uh, for the last quarter, there is an important recovery, especially for Argentina, uh, but in other cases, uh, employment levels are below pre-pandemic uh, levels. Uh, the idea is we have uh, tax benefit micro simulation models for these seven uh, countries. Uh, some of them belong to the South Mod family. For instance, Bolivia, Colombia, and Ecuador belong to the South Mod uh, family of models. Uh, we also have models for Argentina, uh, Uruguay, uh, Mexico, and um, uh, um, uh, okay, Peru, Colombia, and Bolivia, and Ecuador, and for some mod. The idea is all these models are implemented using uh, Euromod. And what we do is uh, we have these models built for uh, 2019. We also Com uh, compute the policies in Euromod for the two quarters, uh, Q2 and Q4. Uh, we have uh, mostly data for 2019, some data for 2020 Q2. And there is an exception here. We have for Mexico information for 2018. So we move this, this data to uh, mimic uh, um, for Mexico the data in 2019. And for the other countries, the, the thing is that in the second quarter, um, the um, um, statistical agencies in several countries didn't have uh, didn't make the whole survey. We have only information on their earnings uh, distribution. We have only microdata on earnings. So what we do is now cast um, um, incomes. We uh, took. 2019 data, we use this uh, earnings distribution in 2020 Q2, and uh, with an, a statistical method, we use a provid and, um, and an average among groups to update the, the data uh, of 2019 to look like 2020 Q2. So this is uh, the, the nowcast. Um, 
And uh, the idea is we are covering the policies that were before the pandemic, 2019, but also we are modeling uh, the full range of new policies um, introduced in, in, in the countries. Mostly uh, during the pandemic, uh, there were introduced uh, benefits, uh, but also, for instance, in Colombia, we also have uh, changes in social insurance contributions and also a solidarity tax for uh, high earners. It was implemented in Q2 in, in Colombia. So there is a, a mix of new policies implemented during the pandemic in, in the region. Okay, uh, so uh, getting back to the now casting, the idea here is that uh, we, we try to mimic the distribution of incomes in 2020 Q2. We only have information on earnings, so we uh, take 2019 data, we chalk uh, the earnings distribution of 2019 to make it look like uh, the distribution in Q2, 2020 Q2. Um, for that, we use, uh, firstly, a probit. Uh, th this probit is going to tell us uh, uh, which observations in 2019 are going to lose their jobs or not in the, uh, during the pandemic, uh, as we are trying to mimic uh, 2020 Q2. And uh, after the probit, if someone is uh, predicted to keep their earnings in 2020 Q2, uh, the idea is uh, that we adjust uh, earnings to mimic uh, the distribution of earnings in 2020 Q2. Uh, how, how do we make this adjustment? The idea is that we, we make groups uh, by industry, employment, and formality. And within these groups, we calculate the average incomes, the average earnings in 2020 Q2 and also in 2019. And we compute the difference, uh, the percentual difference between these two periods and update the 2019 data to 2020 Q2. Uh, the other thing that we do is we, we try to decompose the, the effects of different things. Uh, there is the effect of uh, the COVID pandemic itself. Uh, so we, we see a drop in employment, a drop in earnings, so there is the, this market uh, income effect. We also have the policies, the pre-COVID uh, policies uh, in each country. So for instance, if people lose employment, they are, uh, they are going to stop paying social insurance contributions. So this is uh, an automatic stabilizer effect. And the other thing are the new policies implemented during the, during the pandemic. So the idea is uh, to, to make this decomposition, we have uh, the baseline that we compute with, um, that we, for which we use the, the 2019 policies. We also have the 2020 policies. Uh, we can apply these policies to the 2020 Q2 data and uh, with the policies and without the, the, the new policies to see the effect of automatic stabilizers. And uh, so in, 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 what, in the graphs that I'm going to present, I'm going to decompose these effects in between earnings, automatic stabilizers, and emergency policies. Uh, the other thing is that um, I'm going to do this also for uh, 2020 Q4. In this case, we have uh, actual information. So uh, at the end, if I have time, I'm going to present some um, validation results for the now casting approach that we are using. So this is the, I, I think the most important result for uh, our paper. This is a weighted uh, average of the effects of uh, these three components um, for Q2. So how we read this is as follows. We have uh, uh, towards the negative values, we have earnings. So we see the drop in earnings uh, by each decile. These are deciles of household disposable income uh, pre-pandemic. And the idea here is that we, uh, for the region, we observe a 30% drop in earnings. Um, so this is like the market effect of the, of the pandemic. Uh, the blue, uh, dark, uh, dark blue bars uh, indicate the effect of uh, COVID policies. So uh, mostly in the region, we, we have uh, new benefits, um, especially targeted to the poor, because in the region, uh, the idea is that most cash transfers are targeted to the poor. Um, so we see that uh, on average in the region, 
25% uh, of pre-pandemic disposable income uh, represents uh, the effect of policies in the first decile, but we see that uh, these transfers are uh, especially at the bottom of the distribution because they are uh, focused uh, mainly on, uh, on the poor, but at the top of the distribution we don't see uh, very important effects of COVID policies. The other thing is automatic stabilizers, as we have this counterfactual scenario in which uh, we have the pre-pandemic policies, but the pandemic data, we can see uh, how the previous, uh, the, previous the pre-pandemic uh, tax and benefit system uh, cushion the, the effect of the pandemic. And we see that the, the effect of this automatic stabilizer is uh, increasing as we move uh, to the upper part of the income distribution. So, for instance, the automatic stabilizers are almost null at the uh, first uh, deciles, uh, but are about 5% at the top of the uh, income distribution. This is because, uh, as, as is typical in developing economies, uh, formal work is at the top of the distribution, formal work is paying social insurance contributions. So, when the shock uh, comes, uh, several workers at the, especially, at the upper part of the distribution are going to have lower earnings and they are going con to contribute less to uh, social insurance contributions. So this is the automatic stabilizer effect. And uh, with the circles, we have the um, overall effect, so the, the effect on disposable income relative to disposable income in 2019. So for instance, for the first decile, taking into account uh, the COVID policies, but also the drop in earnings, we see that the effect is null. So uh, this uh, tell us that the COVID policies were uh, effective cushioning the drop in earnings in, uh, at, the to at the bottom of the distribution. But we see that uh, at the upper part of the distribution, the effect is, uh, the net effect is negative. So for instance, for the second decile, the drop in disposable income is about 20% and is more or less the same uh, up around the distribution. So the main uh, message from this graph is that uh, the COVID policies were very focused on the very, very poor, extreme poor, uh, we could tell the, the extreme poor, but in the, in the upper part of the distribution, the policies were not uh, that effective. This is uh, the same graph, but we have uh, the analysis for each country and uh, the idea here is that there, are, there is a huge degree of uh, variation between these three effects. We have Argentina, Bolivia that implemented a lot of uh, COVID policies, but we also have Mexico that implemented no COVID uh, policy. Uh, we also have a high degree of variation in earnings. For instance, Peru has a huge drop in earnings, um, but Argentina, and uh, Uruguay uh, uh, doesn't have uh, this huge drop in, in earnings. And also, for instance, in Mexico, uh, automatic stabilizers play a, uh, a bigger role than in other countries, especially uh, because, drops, uh, because there are drops in uh, uh, income tax payments. Uh, from the poverty and inequality uh, perspective, what we can see here is that in, in the second quarter, uh, inequality increased a lot for most countries, and the COVID policies had a reduced effect, uh, decreasing this uh, increase in inequality, also uh, in poverty. Um, for instance, I don't know, Colombia uh, had a baseline a Gini of 0.5, it increased it uh, five percentage points, uh, but taking into account the new policies, uh, the idea is that this inequality drops uh, only one percentage points. So the effect of the tax benefit system and the new policies were very uh, reduced uh, in the region in terms in, of inequality and also in terms of, po of poverty. We also have the same results for uh, Q2. The idea is the drop in earnings in Q2 is lower because in Q, uh, for, for, sorry, for Q4, the idea is in, in Q4, uh, the uh, economic activity recovers, employment increases, so the drop in earnings relative to 2019 is uh, smaller. Uh, it's about 5%. 
Um, also, there is a reduction in the emergency policies that were implemented, for instance, in several countries for Q4, we don't find any uh, COVID policies, any new transfers to, to households. So the effect of the new policies uh, vanishes as well. And this is the, the results for, for all countries. And also we see that uh, there is a high degree of variability for Q4 uh, for each individual country. Uh, in the case of Colombia and Uruguay are interested, be, interesting because uh, some policies remain even uh, at the end of the 2020 year. Uh, okay, the inequality and poverty, the, the idea is the same. Um, uh, inequality and poverty increases, but the effect of the tax and benefit system is very reduced. So uh, I think this is the main message. Uh, the idea here is that the, the tax benefit systems in America Latina are not designed to face this kind of uh, extreme event that was the pandemic. So uh, the, the, the region needed these um, emergency policies, uh, but the emergency policies were focused uh, at the very bottom of the distribution and not, for instance, uh, in, I don't know, uh, the third, fourth, and fifth decile. Uh, so the, the, the um, the effects of the policies were uh, not that important uh, there. So for, for future work, we're, we are trying to analyze how to improve automatic stabilizers in the region because in the face of such a crisis, uh, it seems that they didn't work in, in Latin America. And I think that's all. Thank you. <laughs>